Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. Excel does a great job importing and exporting data all sorts of ways and with many types of formats. One technique that's been refined and improved over the last several versions is the ability to import live data from the web. This uses a feature called Power Query. Power Query used to be a separate add-in, but if you have one of the recent editions of Excel, it's already built into the application. As for Windows and Mac differences, this part of Power Query is available only in the Windows version. The Mac does have a feature called Power Query, but its abilities are limited, and as of this recording, connecting to the web isn't one of its capabilities. So let's take a look, see how it works. So let's get right into it. What I'm going to do is on the ribbon bar, I'm going to go to the data tab. And this first section here that's called get and transform data, all of this is Power Query. And you can see just by looking at it, there's all kinds of great features that it can do. It can get data from so many different ways. And just to show you, this first item that says get data, I'm going to click that down arrow. And you see there's all sorts of sources, all sorts of types of sources that you can get data from. I'm just going to close that. What we're interested in this episode is getting data from the web. So I'm going to click this from web. That throws this little dialog box. And right now, for the purposes of this video, whether I choose basic or advanced doesn't make much difference. I'll show you advanced just briefly. Most of this we don't really need. So I'm just going to go back to basic. And what I'm going to do in this URL box is I'm going to paste a link to the Wall Street Journal. And this will show us historical prices for Microsoft stock. And I click OK. So Power Query throws this little screen here. And the first thing is it shows me, OK, there's the URL. Table view, well, there's not really much because I haven't selected anything. If I click Document, that's really not much that's useful. I'm going to click this Table 0. Now, you don't always know what this is going to be called. If I go to a different URL, it might not be called document and table zero. It might be called something else. You might have to just kind of click around and, and find it. So we can see all this data, and that's great, but these column headers aren't really very useful. I mean, we can see that this is the date, but these other columns, who knows? But you see up on top, we've got these two tabs. So right now we're looking at table view. I'm going to click, at, click on web view, scroll up a little bit, and I can see this is the actual web page. Now, this is not interactive. This is just, um, you know, like an image, and I can click around. But the important thing is I can see now what these column headers are. Why exactly it's not picking them up, I don't know. But that's okay, because now that we know what they are, we can go and use them. So I'm going to go back to table view. And down at the bottom, you see we have these three buttons. I'm going to click on this one, transform data. That puts the main Power Query screen up here. And you can see we've got these not very useful column headers. Now, what might happen sometimes is you might have the first row showing you what those column headers are. And if that happens, you could click this button, Use First Row as Headers. Not available here. So I can manually put in what those column headers are since we know what they are. So this column one, I'm just going to double click that. You see it's open for editing. I'm going to call this Date. The second one, I'm going to call this Open and volume. And I want to give a name to this table. So over in this task pane on the right, under properties, it asks for a table name. Table zero isn't really much of a name. So I'm going to call this MSFT, that's Microsoft's ticker symbol, MSFT historical. Keep in mind, every day new history is made. Now I'm ready to bring this into Excel. So on Power Query's ribbon bar, the very first item you see it says Close and Load. I'm going to click that down arrow, and I'm going to choose Close and Load to. This tells me, OK, where am I going to put it? So you see we have a whole bunch of options. I want to put it on the existing worksheet, because you see I'm already on cell A3. That's where I want to put this table. And that's it. All I have to do is click OK. 
and you see it puts this table on the page and this is great and I could go and use this right now right away just as though it's a table that I created myself but I want to show you a few more things you might want to manage the connection and that's what's going on here in this task pane by the way you notice when I roll over this I get a little preview I'm just gonna get rid of that let's say this task pane wasn't here I'm just gonna close that for a moment so I'm gonna go back to the data table and if I want to get that task pane back up see queries and connections I click that and that brings us back up but what I want to do right now is go where it says existing connections and I'm gonna click that and that throws this other little dialog box and you see we have two tabs connections and tables so this is showing me obviously the connection we have I'm gonna to go to tables and that shows me that particular table that we have over here. I'm going to double click it and that brings me back into this familiar dialog box. We saw this a little earlier and this time what I'm going to do is in the lower left corner I click properties and this gives me all sorts of options to manage the connection like when it's refreshing and how it refreshes and all that. I'm not going to do anything with this right now just want you to see uh, that it's available. I'm just going to cancel out. And I'll cancel out again. Now, another thing I'm going to double click on, and now that we have the task pane back again, I'm going to double click this. Right, if I roll over it, I get this preview. I'm going to double click it. And that brings us right back into Power Query like we were the first time. And we're in business all over again if we want to make any sorts of changes here. If I don't need to, I can simply close it. Back in Excel. I can close this and if I want I can go into the table design tab on the ribbon bar and manage this like any old table. I think this is a pretty cool feature, don't you? When you need the most recent data, using Power Query saves you the trouble of having to go and find it and grab it every time you edit your worksheets. So until next time, my name is Bob and this has been Between the Sheets.